The Lord is my inheritance and my cup. He alone will give me my reward. The measuring line has marked a lovely place for me. My inheritance is my great delight. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we keep the memory of a Carmelite friar saint from Poland, Father Raphael Kalinowski. And these words are for the, from the Carmelite supplement to the breviary. And we read, Father Raphael Kalinowski was born to Polish parents in the city of Vilnius in the year 1835. Following military service, he was condemned in 1864 to 10 years of forced labor in Siberia. I looked it up. It's because at one point he sided with an insurrectionist movement against Russia, and that caught up with him in time. So he's banished for 10 years to Siberia. In 1877, he became a Carmelite and was a ordained a priest in the year 1882. He contributed greatly to the restoration of the Descalced Carmelite Order in Poland. His life was distinguished by zeal for church unity. He loved the Unionists and by his unflagging devotion to his ministry as confessor and spiritual director. He died in Padovice in the year 1907. To prepare ourselves for the word and the sacrament, we cast ourselves willingly on the mercy of the Lord. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have gravely sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Lord God, you made your priest Saint Raphael of Saint Joseph, strong in adversity, and filled him with a great love in promoting church unity. Through his prayers, make us strong in faith and in love for one another, that we too may generously work together for the unity of all believers in Christ. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, ever and ever. A reading from the first book of Maccabees. Judas and his brother said, Now that our enemies have been crushed, let us go up to purify the sanctuary and rededicate it. So the whole army assembled and went up to Mount Zion. Early in the morning on the 25th day of the ninth month, that is the month of Chislev, in the year 148. They arose and offered sacrifice according to the law on 
the new altar of burnt offering that they had made. On the anniversary of the day on which the Gentiles had defiled it, on that very day it was reconstructed, reconsecrated, with songs, harps, flutes, and cymbals. All the people prostrated themselves and adored and praised heaven who had given them success. For eight days they celebrated the dedication of the altar and joyfully offered burnt offerings and sacrifices of deliverance and praise. They ornamented the fake of the temple with gold crowns and shields. They repaired the gates of the priest's chamber and furnished them with doors. There was a great joy among the people now that the disgrace of the Gentiles was removed. Then Judas and his brothers and the entire congregation of Israel decreed that the days of the dedication of the altar should be observed with joy and gladness on the anniversary every year for eight days. From the twelfth to the twenty-fifth day of the month Chisrael. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> we praise your glory. We praise your glorious name, Almighty God. We praise your glorious name, Almighty God. Blessed may you be, O Lord, God of Israel, our Father, from eternity to eternity. We praise your glorious name, Almighty God. Yours, O Lord, are grandeur and power, majesty, splendor, and glory. For all in heaven and on earth is yours. We praise your glorious name, O mighty God. Yours, O Lord, is the sovereignty. You are exalted as head over all. Riches and honor are from you. We praise your glorious name, O mighty God. You have dominion over all. In your hands are power and might. It is yours to give grandeur and strength to all. We praise your majesty, O mighty God. Chief priests, the scribes, and the leaders of the people, meanwhile, were seeking to put him to death. But they could find no way to accomplish their purpose because all of the people were hanging on his words. The Gospel of the Lord. As often enough, I have in hand 
reflections on the weekday lectionary readings by the Franciscan specialist, really quite an exegete, scripture scholar, Father Roland Faden. He writes, and I'll add a comment here and there. Our first reading from the first book of Maccabees recounts the rededication of the temple by Judas Maccabeus and his brothers. It's recalled today in the Jewish feast of Hanukkah. The word should ring a bell if you have any Jewish friends or neighbors. There is a Jewish feast day, many of you will remember, Hanukkah, during December, uh, more or less in our pre-Christmas period there in December. It is precisely the anniversary of the rededication of the temple and the altar in the, on Mount Zion in Jerusalem, desecrated in the second century before Christ by Antiochus Epiphanes, who uh, was Greek, one of the Greek emperors of the time, forcing Greek and cult more cultured ways, as it were, uh, on the Hebrews. And we have Maccabean martyrs, and we've been reading about them this past week. The temple had been desecrated with the blasphemies of Antiochus Epiphanes, Judas and his company constructed the altar, uh, uh, concert, excuse me, constructed the altar of burnt sacrifices and offered sacrifices there according to the precepts of the law. On the anniversary date of defilement, precisely, Rededication took place with the participation of musicians as well as many public worshipers. For eight days, and this is where you and I in the Catholic tradition get the liturgical institution of octaves. For eight days they celebrated as one long day something very important to their memory. And that, at the present moment here, is the rededication of the desecrated temple in Jerusalem. For eight days following the dedication, the, the feast and work on the temple continued. It was decided that the feast should be solemnly celebrated each year to commemorate the end of the period of persecution and blasphemy. In the gospel today, Jesus shows his respect for this temple and he violently ejects from the temple precincts those who are selling things to be sacrificed in the temple. What had begun as a convenient space for visitors from other parts of the country to buy the necessities for the sacrifices they were to offer had become a place of commerce and business too much like secular affairs would be. The action is also an implicit Lucan, so St. Luke's acknowledgement that God does not dwell in houses made by human hands, as in Acts chapter 7. As you and I know from the number of dedications of basilicas and cathedrals and all these past two weeks. He writes, Christianity has always had churches of particular reverence, but note, and we have done this repeatedly here, we note that there never has been a single place of distinct or obligatory worship for the Christian faithful. The reason for this is clear from the gospel. The risen Jesus is the place of sacred worship. He is the unique tabernacle of the new dispensation. In addition, he now shares the spirit with his followers, with the result 
that they too may become living stones of the temple of Christ's body. Or with the Johannine Jesus, Jesus of John the Evangelist, we worship God now not on Mount Jerusy like the Samaritans, nor in Jerusalem like the Jews, but in spirit and in truth, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Compassionate Father, we bless you for the word, the sacrament, and the memory of your saints. Together with St. Rachel Kolipnowski, we pray today that all followers of Jesus Christ may someday be united so as to give them better witness in a secularized world and grant all our petitions because we always make them in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen.
God, the Almighty Father. Lord, may the gifts we bring to your altar in memory of St. Rachel be acceptable to you. Free us from the things that keep us from you and teach us to seek you as our only good through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of St. Gregor upon the Nelson, you bid your church rejoice. So too you strengthen her by the example of the holy life, teach her by the preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. O oh, 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 Lord, God, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O oh, Son in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O oh, Son in the highest. For indeed, holy, O oh Lord, the fount of all hope, make holy therefore these gifts we pray. Sending down your spirit upon them like the new fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of
Savior's command to our life divine teaching we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
blessing, brother, of the body. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let us pray. Lord, by the power of this sacrament and the example of St. Rachel Kalinowski, guide us always in your love. May the good work you have begun in us reach perfection in the day of Christ Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go.